Well, it took a bit longer than I expected, like so many parts of this project, but the electronics board is finally complete and installed in R2. So since my last video, uh, I had to evolve my prototype from foam board uh, onto the nylon cutting board. Uh, I had to do some creative wire routing, and I also had to solve a number of problems with my own custom designed 3D printable parts. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's been happening. So continuing with prototyping my electronics board, um, I do want to stress that prototyping this on foam board is a great way to go. Uh, this is really easy to work with. It's easy enough to cut. Uh, it's rigid enough that I can, I can actually mount components to it. Um, I have some items that are actually bolted all the way through. Um, others, uh, like the dome controller or the motor controllers, uh, I have standoffs on them, but you can just kind of pop them through the outer edge and the rigidity of this makes it a really uh, great thing to prototype on. So in terms of laying out of the components, uh, really not too many things have changed so far. I still have my amplifier at the top, my motor controllers and MP3 player in the middle and my Arduino at the bottom. Uh, one thing that you might notice is not here is the body marked Arduino. Um, I've decided that because of all of the potential servo connections that would be attached to either the Mark Duino or a servo motor controller, it doesn't really make sense for me to include those on this board if I want this board to be easily removable. It would just be too many connections to have to unload. So I think what I'm going to do is when I do get to that point, I will find a place in the body to mount that and maybe have a single power and data line run to that uh, part of the body and, and then go from there. So you might notice that there's a handful of 3D printed parts. Uh, one of the things that this process has taught me is that uh, I need to be able to solve some of my own problems using Fusion 360, and several of them have cropped up while I've been going through this. Uh, let me give you a closer look here. So first off, in the amplifier that I have here uh, it has these tiny little screws and standoffs in there and try as I might, I could not find hardware that would work with that, that would allow me to uh, mount that directly from the back of the board. So what I ended up doing was designing these little 3D printed panel mounts. Um, they clip around the standoffs that's in there and allow me to just bolt it uh, to the board wherever I want to. I can easily adjust the height if I want to. I can just remodel those and re-export those. Uh, so that was one of the first things that I had developed. Uh, and then, in terms of all of my outboard connections, uh, I wanted to be able to use Anderson power poles, but there really isn't an easy way to panel mount them. You can buy metal brackets um, that will allow you to do a couple of power poles, but they're pretty pricey. So what I ended up doing was designing some two-piece 3D printable panel mounts um, that actually hold them in there really securely. So I could print them out in whatever configuration I need. Um, so, for instance, the top connector there is going to be for one of the drive motors. Uh, the 2x2 two two configuration there will be my speaker connections. Over here, I'm going to have one pair power the dome motor. The other pair uh, will power the dome itself, which I will also still need to uh, include a pair of DuPont connectors there. And then down here, I've got two more connections. One will be for the second drive motor. And the second one would be a power that I could use to distribute to the rest of the body, maybe to the Mark Duino or the CBI DPL lights. Uh, I also technically have room. I could add a third pair of connections there. Um, it would be kind of nice to have some future expansion. The other thing that I did was I did design a couple of housings for the little voltmeters that I have. These are little two-piece things. Um, I will, I'm in the process of uh, posting all of these uh, updates and models to uh, printables.com. So uh, once uh, once that's done, I will update the description and include some links. So anyway, but that's where I am right now, and uh, we'll continue from here. One more pair of connections that I forgot to mention earlier was uh, these two down at the bottom. Uh, one of them is going to be the input from the batteries, and the other one is going to be the connection for the lines that run directly from the Sabertooth motor controller back to the battery. Uh, they'll include a diode, and that's to handle the regeneration current that you would get if you were to push R2 with, uh, with him turned off. The motors will generate electricity. That electricity will 
go back up into the system. And unless that electricity has a path back to the battery, uh, it could potentially fry your motor controller. Um, when you have a switch uh, on the battery, obviously that breaks the connection. So there's no longer a path back to the battery. But by having the lines run from the saber tooth directly back to the battery, it bypasses the switch and uh, it'll provide a, a safeguard so that I can safely push R2 when, uh, when he's turned off. So another big challenge that I've had to face in doing this is, uh, is really designing this thing to be two-sided. Uh, not only did I have to rearrange some components so that pass-throughs uh, were not intruding on everything on the back, um, but I also have to keep in mind how everything is going to be fastened. Uh, so for instance, uh, this MP3 trigger, I originally um, actually I think had it turned around the other way, thinking that I would want access to the SD card so my connections would be here and here. But the problem was by when I added these pass-throughs, there wasn't really a space on the back of the board for the voltage regulator. So I ended up kind of turning that around. Um, and here's another benefit to the foam board is that everything is somewhat rigidly attached. So if we turn it around, you can take a look and see how I have things set up on the back side. So another key thing that I've needed to do uh, in taking my original prototype and putting it on here was to try and minimize the footprint of everything, uh, which really meant being able to make the tightest bends that I can on my connectors. And I think I've mentioned it before uh, with the heat shrink connectors, uh, trimming off some of the heat shrink so that the connector uh, allowed me to make a, a, a quicker bend uh, of the wire. And uh, so I went ahead and mocked that up so that I could actually see how far apart these uh, components had to be in order for me to be able to, to wire it. Um, so again, we're... It's a matter of prototyping sort of as you go um, and making sure that you're going to be able to do uh, exactly what you want to do. Uh, and I'm, I'm hopeful now that I'll be able to get all these components wired nice and neat and tidy and keep everything, everything pretty well organized. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. Um, I think I'm ready to take the prototype and to start reproducing it on the actual cutting board and uh, we'll see how well that goes. All right, so it's been a couple of hours and I've made some good progress here. So the first thing I needed to do was clear off my prototype board. Once that was done, I transferred all of my markings onto the nylon cutting board. Uh, for that, Sharpie works great. Uh, it, it stays, it dries quickly, it does not rub off uh, as you're handling it but it will come off really easily with some isopropyl alcohol. So definitely use Sharpie to mark up your board. Um, in terms of cutting the board, um, you used a combination of tools. Uh, first of all, for drilling through, uh, I used either a quarter inch for the narrower ones or a three eighths inch uh, bit for the fatter pass throughs. Uh, you definitely want to use the Forstner style bit for the larger holes. Uh, this will prevent the back of the board from just blowing out when you're drilling through there. It also helps to have uh, a backing material that's uh, as hard or harder than uh, than this cutting board, uh, just to help uh, ease uh, the, the drill passing through. I actually used my prototype cutting board, the nylon board. I just put this on top of that and then drilled through, and it worked out pretty well. And also, before I forget, definitely use a center punch. This is like one of those spring-loaded center punches. Um, you definitely want to mark all of the places that you're going to drill so that the drill doesn't travel uh, when it, you start drilling. Uh, you, you know, you've gone to all the trouble of marking this out. You may as well be accurate in your drilling. Once I had the end holes drilled, then the challenge became cutting through this. Um, now, I've got a typical... Uh, hobby exacto knife, but it's not serrated, um, and that really doesn't help you a whole lot. What I did find, though, was this little guy, and this is like a, a hobby saw, but it does have a nice serrated blade that's nice and, and skinny in there. You do still have to be careful that you don't bend this. Uh, it's not super rigid, uh, but this worked out really well. So after cutting my end holes, or in the case of, of the uh, power pole pass-throughs, I would drill out the corners with, you know, an eighth inch drill bit. Uh, then I was able to do most of the cutting with this 
And then once that was done, I could clean it up with the X-Acto knife um, or some files. I have both a round file and a flat file. Those are definitely your friends to help even things out. This isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, it's pretty good. And then finally, I also used, uh, this is a deburring tool. Uh, I got these for my, uh, for my prints to help get rid of elephant's foot. And what I normally would do is I would just round over the edges on both sides using the deburring tool. So uh, that takes care of the pass-throughs. Next is going to be drilling all of the holes for uh, standoffs, which I'm going to want to um, countersink on the back side of the board, uh, and then the uh, through holes for mounting the power pole connectors. Let's see how that goes. All right, so we now have all of the components attached to both the front and the back of the board. Uh, the countersunk bolts uh, that hold the standoffs for the boards uh, on the other side um, all came out really good. Um, those are all securely held in place. Uh, my custom power pole mounts are all in place. Uh, that shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, one challenge that I did have, though, was uh, still with attaching the amplifier in such a way that I could get it off again if need be. You'll notice uh, these lower holes on each side are not being used, and that's because I realized after I started putting this together that uh, I was not going to have access to those bolts on the other side. The fuse blocks uh, actually blocked them. Uh, so what I ended up doing instead was replacing the two uh, bottom uh, clips with uh, this sort of cleat. Uh, the cleat is essentially permanently held in place and allows me to just slide the amplifier down into position. Uh, with that in place, uh, then I can still have access to these top screws uh, from the back and I can easily remove those clips and get the amplifier off. So the nice thing too with this is uh, these particular uh, uh, bus bars uh, have these protective covers with these nylon nuts and it actually provides a nice set of feet for setting the board down to doing some work on it. So with all of this stuff now in position, uh, the final step is to wire it all up. So what has this process taught me? It's taught me that neat and tidy wiring is not at all easy to do. This is about as neat and tidy as I'm going to get it. Uh, it's fine for now. Um, everything that I needed to do is done on here. The only thing that I technically could add is I haven't yet attach anything to that second connector there. Um, that I am most likely going to end up uh, feeding a fused 24 volts, uh, and that will be what I can pass to some other point inside R2's body. And from there, I can down convert to uh, 12 volts, I think, for my VU meter if I decide to use that, and five volts for everything else. In terms of strategy for making all these connections, I, again, pretty much followed the process that I used for my prototype. I started by getting the basic power bus wired in there first, um, and then I started going in and running all of my connections for my peripherals um, and trying to group the wires together as best I can. That's, that's about it. It really wasn't that much different than the prototype, uh, other than, you know, I was trying to make the wires exactly the right length that I needed. In some cases, I was successful. In other cases, less so. But in the end, uh, everything does work, and uh, I should be good to go. All right, so here we have the board in there. Let's see if I can get the camera down in there really well. So off of the saber tooth, you can see where the regeneration lines fork off of the positive leads. Uh, those will lead down to the connector there on the right, and then two sets of leads from that with diodes at the ends will uh, attach to the battery. Um, so that will be, uh, that will complete the regeneration path. Um, I also will be routing a USB cable from the Arduino uh, that will go around the body to the charge bay where I'll have uh, a port so I can do software updates. Um, I've got my speaker connections, my drive connections, uh, my dome power.
power and uh, umbilical and uh, the right or the left foot um, the one connected there is still open as I said I'll be using that at some point later on but uh, overall this works really well so in terms of what's next uh, well really the next thing is to get his legs back on and uh, trim those leg uh, cables to length and get him mobile uh, but I also do still need to mount my main power switch uh, somewhere on the inside of the skirt probably along the front edge underneath there and I need to design a cradle for that um, that I can use um, so that's going to be on the agenda for the next week and I really hope to uh, get this guy mobile um, once that's done, the only part of the body that I have yet to tackle are the utility arms. Uh, my utility arms have been done for a while, but the, the fit is actually a little bit on the tight side. So I need to decide if I'm going to sand those and repaint them or file away the openings here and do some touch-up painting there. Um, they're not going to be animated for quite some time, but uh, I do want to get those in there so that he at least looks complete. So that's it for now. Um, the electronics is pretty much done. Uh, the only last step, like I said, is to get this guy actually moving. And so hopefully the next video that I post will see his uh, maiden voyage. Thanks for watching.